Hi everyone, Dr. Emily Letran here, speaker and high performance coach, and welcome to the second segment of Fast Track to High Performance. Um, I hope you had a chance to review your notes that you took for the last session, which we talk about clarity, knowing the values and knowing what's important to you, knowing um, your focus, your priorities, because all of that is going to dictate how you go on and carry out your day, you know, whether it's your daily activities or maybe you have a weekly plan, all of that would be, um, you know, you, you get your focus better if you know exactly what's most important to you. Now, the session today is on energy. And, um, you know, I want you to just take a moment and think about since the last time we talked, uh, what's the most, what's um, something great that has happened to you? Right? Something positive. Um, is it maybe you close a big case? Maybe um, you're excited because you're going to be doing something new, something fun. Maybe you're planning for a seminar. By the way, my upcoming seminar is August 9th and 10th in San Diego. So you should be excited planning to go on that seminar. Okay, So think of something that, that makes you happy right? from last week to this week. Whenever you feel a little down, whenever you feel a little stressed, Think of one positive thing that has happened, what you've done about it, and then just cheer yourself up. Because it's very important as high performers that we bring our own joy, right? We're not gonna depend on, oh, until I have so many new patients that I'm gonna be happy, until I collect so much money, um, until I have so many clients, until et cetera, et cetera, happen to me. It's all about us bringing our own joy. I'll tell you what's getting me excited today. Um, by about 11.30, today, I have produced and collected about $10,000. Now, we don't do this all the time, so it was a good day, it was, it was, kind of, it was cool. So I decided to uh, have a, uh, a Vietnamese iced coffee, right? Coffee and, and condensed milk. Um, it's w one of the coffee that I drink in the morning sometime. I've been kind of drinking it because um, we went to New Orleans and we really like Cafe Du Monde, so we bought a couple of cans and so I've been doing that. But I actually quit drinking coffee several years ago when I started uh, studying and learning with Brendan Bouchard because I just felt that I could keep up my energy in multiple ways and I don't need to drink coffee in the morning. Uh, so I just kind of went back drinking coffee because I like the taste of it. I just, that's a full disclosure there. But I want you to think of a happy, happy moment, something that you like, something that cheer you up in the past week, and just put a smile on your face, okay? So that's, that's where we're going to start. So the session today is on energy, and as you know, energy is very, very important. Unless you have the energy, you can be productive. You can't start your day in the morning, and then by 4, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you still have the same amount of energy. And guess what? Sometime, let's say for a dentist, you, you might have somebody who walk in toward 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and you've been working for about 6 hours, and then this person... Um, broke a tooth, has an emergency, and now you got to treat this person. It's going to take you another 45 minutes, an hour, and it takes full focus because you know how dentists, we work in small spaces. Um, but it doesn't matter. It could be dentist, it could be any profession, right? Every time you have the blessing to serve, you have a project to do, you want to give it 100%, and you want to have the full energy to do that. Uh, that's what I want to. That's what I want to remind you. So that's why energy is important for me. Energy is what keeps me going. Uh, like I said, I happen to drink some coffee at around one o'clock this afternoon, one thirty at lunchtime. I, I drink about that much coffee and um, condensed milk. I I don't think I'm going to sleep tonight <laughs> just because coffee has an effect on me. But I'm usually pretty full of energy throughout the day, all the way to the end of the day. And the reason for that is I'm, I know that energy is important. I keep finding ways to re recharge myself, and we're going to talk about all that right now um, in this segment of energy. And, and I want you to all keep in mind, you know, think about what you do every day, and then what can you do to keep yourself recharged, right? Because this is all about you. I'll share my experience with you, my strategy with you, but this is all about you, okay? So energy, right now, what I want you to do is just, right now, wherever you are, give yourself a grade, okay? Uh, uh, from one to 10, where is your energy level? Okay, just put it down, from one to 10, 
Okay? And then just make it, you know, just my energy level at 5 or 5 p.m. is a 5 out of 10, or is a 6 out of 10, or is a 2 out of 10, right? Just write that down. Okay, now, I want you to think, in the last three months, that would make it March, I'm sorry, it would make it April, May, and June. Okay, so let, we're not going to count July, but let's say in the last three months, how have you felt energetically? Okay, give yourself a grade from one to 10 in the last three months. I'm not talking about yesterday, I'm not talking about today, in the last three months in general. This is you grading yourself, giving yourself a mark in energy. Okay, in the last three months, how have you felt energetically? Your mental energy in the last three months, have you been sharp? Have you been focused? Have you been driven? Or were you kind of lethargic? You were kind of laissez-faire. You, you just go with the flow. You're not paying attention. You're not intentional, okay? That's your mental energy. Then how is your physical energy? If you wake up at five or 6 a.m. and let's say your energy was at a 10, by three or four, I wanna know where that is. Or you, not me, you wanna know where it is, right? In general throughout your day. How has your, how has your physical energy be? Are you full of energy? Can you see another patient if you have to? How do you, how would, if somebody just walk in at the end of the day and you have to see that patient or that client or the customer, how would you go and recharge that energy? Or you just say, uh, you know what, just reschedule the patient. Okay, I want you to think of that. So how do you, how is your physical energy? And why do you think that is so? So if you say, well, Emily, you know, my physical energy is usually a four. I'd like for you to write down, why is it a four? Why is it so low? Okay, let, let, let's just say seven is passing, right? Five is average. Seven is passing, that's a C, right? 70%, 80%, 90%. If your energy is always at a seven, why is it at a seven? Is it because maybe you skip lunch so you don't feel well? Is it maybe you skip breakfast? Is it because you don't drink enough energy? Is it because you didn't sleep enough the night before? Is it because you're on um, like Facebook all day long and your eyes are tired? I wanna know why. I wanna know why your energy level is what you say it is. Okay, you got that down? You wrote that down? Now, next, I want you to think about a time when your physical and your mental energy was at its, its best. When was that? When you were at your best. And, you know, it doesn't have to be last, we're not about the last three months anymore. Just think about a time when, you're, when your energy was at its best. And, and then I want you to write down what was going on at that time? What, what were you involved in that your energy was at its best? And how did that feel when you had so much energy? And, and I want to share with you, for me, um, it's two, two times, right? Two, well, more than two, but I, I usually reference a time when I was in dental school, when I was in professional school. There's so many things to do. There is so little time and there's so little money, right? So you, you're a starving student, some of us. You're a sleep deprived student. You go to a school and you gotta spend eight hours in the lecture hall, whether you, maybe in the morning you're in the lecture or in the afternoon, you're, um, you're, you're doing lab practical, you know, you're working at the bench. And then, and then you go eat dinner, so now you finish your eight hours there, and now you gotta go back to the lab and do some more lab work. So you stay in the lab for a couple of hours, and then when you go home, you still have to study, okay? The whole day, I remember telling myself, I need more than 24 hours. 24 hours, not enough. But then, how did I, how did I go through the whole four years like that? I mean, sleep deprived, a lot of time hungry, right? Because either you don't have time to eat, or maybe you didn't have enough money to buy enough to eat, and but you go on, you go on for four years, and you actually do what's required of you. 
okay? Why? Because you were focused. You, I was focused, or, or all of us. We were very focused. We got that one goal. We got to graduate. We got to finish this case. Got to go on to the next case. And I got to keep my energy up because if, if I'm if I'm falling asleep, nobody's gonna do the work for me, right? I can't just have my friend do the work for me. I got to do the work. I got to do the lab work. I got to go see the patients. Once you have, once you get into the clinic, you still have to go to class in the morning. Then you go to the clinic, and then you take a lunch break, and then you have class in the afternoon. Then you go to the clinic, and then in the evening you're taking you're doing lab work again. So constantly going on and on and on but very focused keeping the energy up the second time i usually reference with people is when i just had a baby and i had three but it's the same thing every time you have a newborn you just find the energy from somewhere because you got to take care of the little baby and i don't care if you're a man or a woman if you're a dad or a mom there's an extra person there's a new person not an extra person there's a new person in your life this new person demands your attention demands your energy i remember waking up well you know how the baby is the baby sleep for two hours and then i was breastfeeding so my way of getting away from being stuck with the baby all the time is i was pumping my milk so i got these little jars of about two and a half ounces that's how much my daughter ate i think my son were going up to four ounces but i got all these little jars so i make sure i pump stick it in the fridge baby need to drink it's either me or the husband, right? So I'm not doing everything. The husband's gonna have to chip in. And then, you know how you go to bed and you 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 try to drag it, make sure the baby go to bed like at 11, maybe? And then of course the baby's gonna get up at one. So you go to bed later, let's say at 12. So you barely sleeping, then you wake up, you're still awake, you feed the baby. Now you go back and now you really get your two hours of sleep and the baby wake up again. And then you feed the baby again, right? So I adjusted my level of energy based on the activities that were important to me to get my results. My result was I, I need to get some sleep and I need to take care of this little baby. So I'm going to change. I'm going to adjust. But in order to do that, I have to be fully engaged. It's not, well, let me just kind of go on and let's hope this baby is going to fall asleep, right? Let's hope this baby not going to want food at 2 a.m. Uh, let's hope I have enough milk, right? No, no none of that was happening. Be, having that energy, being very intentional. I was drinking a lot of water because I, I need to make sure I got, I got the milk. I was drinking a lot of water, was eating a lot of good nutritional stuff because you got to share that with a baby. Uh, pumping clockwork pumping even when I was working for somebody as an associate it would be okay I just need you know, you're sitting that next patient I need 10 minutes break and then I just run to the bathroom and I would pump and I would get my two and a half ounces or whatever um, sometime in the middle of the afternoon so I pump at lunch I pump in the morning take a quick break then pump at lunch and take another break in the afternoon so I would go home with three little jars right and then when I get home I don't have to feed the baby I'm gonna give the milk to my husband and he's responsible for feeding the baby while I'm cooking dinner or whatever. But all of that is, is you, when, when, when the kids were young, when they, when they were babies, it's like the energy for me is not enough. I gotta have enough energy to take care of the little person and the husband and however many people is in the room, is in the house. So you become very intentional. You do everything on purpose. You do not waste your energy. You do not waste your time. Now. If you did that when your kid was young, how come you're not doing that all the time? Because that's what got you through all of that difficult and challenging time. So we, got, we need to get into the mindset where everything is important. Everything that you decide is important is important. And you set the time and you make sure you have the energy to handle all those things. So think of the time when you were on top of the game, you, you don't waste any time, you don't waste any energy, you're energetic, you're taking care of yourself, you go through that tough time. That's the time I want you to reflect back and think what did you do to help you go through all that? And that is how you maintain your energy. Fast forward to today, right? We were talking about where's your energy level wherever you are, a five, a six, 
at seven. Okay. Let's do an exercise together. I want you to all close your eyes. Okay. And I may pick a little bit because I'm looking at the looking at the phone. But I want everybody just close your eyes and just sit up straight, right? Sit up straight in your chair. Close your eyes. And we're gonna take a deep breath in and blow it out through your nose. Another deep breath in. Blow it out through your nose. Another deep breath in. And blow it out through your nose. And I want you to keep doing that. And as you do that, I want you to repeat to yourself the word release. Okay? Just slowly, just just say it to yourself. You can say it out loud a little bit, but the word release. The release here means you're gonna be releasing stress, releasing tension, gathering your energy. Okay, release all the worries. And I want you to keep doing that. Just breathe in, blow out. Say the word release. Keep on doing that until I ask you to stop. Okay, I'm gonna look over to my computer over here just to keep up the time. And you ready? Release. Okay, now you can open your eyes. And I want you to think, where's your energy now? Earlier when we started, I asked you to give yourself a little ranking of your energy. How does it feel right now? And I'll tell you, a lot of times when I have my client going through this, they feel more relaxed, but the energy goes up. Okay, and what we just did is a two minutes, two minutes meditation. We call it a two minutes release meditation. You, that's how you, you, you release of the worries, release of the stress, and you just focus on your breathing, and you just breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. So, we just did a two minutes release meditation, and you feel your energy going up. A lot of times, people will tell me they go up one or two notches, okay? We didn't drink any coffee. We didn't have any Red Bull. We didn't um, have any cappuccino. We didn't have any Starbucks. But we raise our energy in two minutes. So I want you to think when you are working hard, 
you're busy, you're going from room to room, or maybe you go from one client to the next, you know, we, um, some of us are consultants, we're on the phone and you talk to a client for an hour, you're tired, and then you got another, another client scheduled right, right after that. You take two minutes to do this release meditation and you bring your energy level up. You're in full control of your own energy. Now, if you have your staff, say you work in a dental office, you have your staff sitting in the front all day long and they're like this and they slouch and they just, you know, tell them to sit up, tell them to do the breathing exercise, tell them to move around. All of that will raise the energy up and, and they don't need to be getting a drink and getting some ice cream and getting some cookies or anything like that. Okay, so you can instantly change your energy in two minutes. All right, now I want you to think in um, a couple of areas in your life we are going um, to, to write down which area in our life that we will need to develop habits that will really support you, right? For energy and for health. So habits that will support you. Think about um, nutrition. So write down nutrition. And then I want you to think, what habits do you have? that would help you increase your energy and your health in the area of nutrition. Now, if you say, I eat healthy, I'm completely, I'm good, I'm 100%, I eat kale, I drink green stuff, um, I'm vegan, whatever it is that you work done. Okay, great. So you're already at high capacity, high level. I want to challenge you how do you kick it up a notch? If you think that your energy is at 100, which I don't think is possible, but let's say you think your energy is at 100, how do you get to 105? How do you kick it up? Because, you know, wherever we are, we can always go one level up. And that's what high performance is all about. If you think you're good already, how do you get it to the next level? If you think that you're just mediocre, I want to challenge you to have that ambition to be better because mediocre doesn't serve anybody any good, right? So think of your energy, so nutrition, right? The food you eat, the drinks and everything, the nutrition. What kind of habits do you have that really support your energy? Now, if you write down uh, not too many, none, then I want you to arrow, asterisk, whatever you, you have there, because I would want you to go back and address that yourself, okay? Next, think of wellness. Wellness here meaning exercise, that kind of thing, okay? In the area of wellness, what about there? What habits do you have that support your wellness? And is, uh, are they good enough, right? So I want you to go ahead and write that down. Some people, my clients, sometimes say, well, you know, I really should go to the gym, okay? How, how come you don't go to the gym? Well, you know, it's too cold in the morning and too dark at night and too hot in the afternoon, okay? Do you need to go to the gym to actually exercise? No, maybe not, okay? What can you do at home to exercise? Well, maybe I can buy, I don't know, some weights, um, stationary bike, whatever it is, you know, an elliptical. Okay, is it possible to invest in that? Yes, okay. Do you think you can set up the time to do that? Yes, when? Ah, uh, when I have time, no. When does it fit into your schedule? What time do you wake up in the morning? Oh, I wake up at 6 o'clock. Okay, do you think you have 15 minutes to jump on to the, um, to, to the elliptical? Yes? No? Okay, well, if you don't have 15 minutes in the morning to jump on to the elliptical, do that for 15 minutes and then take a shower. Do you think you have time in the evening? Can you do that right before dinner? Before you go and, and take care of dinner? So. When you say, yes, maybe I can do that, yes, there's something I could do, I want you to write down a time that you can commit to doing that. Now, at the beginning, 
nobody is going to do, I'm going to do that every day of the week, right? Maybe you say, you know what, I'm doing Tuesday and Thursday, okay? That's all I need you to commit to, Tuesday and Thursday. And then Tuesday and Thursday next week, Tuesday and Thursday for the whole month, then we may say, you know what, let's just add Monday to that. Let's just add Wednesday to that. This is you working on yourself. I don't want you to be pushing yourself and then you're the one giving up on yourself. That's a bad, bad, bad idea. I want you to push yourself and take it one step at a time because we're working on results. We're not working to, to impress anybody. You're not, you're not gonna impress anybody. You're only gonna impress yourself. You wanna improve this for yourself so you can be a better person for your family and for your patients, your clients, for the community. So in the area of wellness, what habits can you do, can, can, can you start, can you keep, keep up to increase wellness, right? And then I want you to think about sleep. Now, some of us are dentists, we understand sleep apnea, we understand that we, um, there's certain things clinically that show you that the, the, the patient doesn't sleep well. Well, when was the last time you look at yourself, look at your mouth, maybe you did a sleep study on yourself? Do you know that you need more sleep? Every single time when I lecture, internationally, nationally, locally, at least half of the room will raise their hand, say, who need more sleep? Me, 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 me. How come you're not sleeping enough? Oh, we don't know. Okay, one time I was on a Facebook group and this is very interesting because people in this particular group, they always complain that they're tired, right? Oh, I don't have enough sleep. I need to take care of my kids. I need to take care of work, etc., etc. So there was this one time when somebody posted on Facebook, and this it would be at 1 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, this person say, is anybody else awake or is it just me? Watching TV, or something like that. And I thought it was really funny. I'm in California, so I'm three hours behind, and I just said, I'm awake, but it's only 10 p.m. And after that, there are at least 50 comments of all these people who are not sleeping yet. And I know for a fact some of them are in the East Coast, but they're not sleeping, they're on Facebook. If you think about it, what good does that do? You're on Facebook reading comments. Um, and I mean, it was 10 p.m. for me, so technically I'm okay. But if, if you don't have anything to do, why are you on Facebook just reading things that sometimes are irrelevant? Um, you know, it's, it's not productive for your time. It will be much more productive if you go to sleep, right? So I was reading these 50 comments and I was, I was laughing because I thought these are the, the same people who complain that they're tired. These are the same people that complain that they don't have time. But when they do have time to go to sleep and take care of themselves, they don't go to sleep. So think about that. The next time you complain, the next time you whine, you say, I'm, you know, I don't have enough time. And then you look at whatever you're doing right now, which is very, really not productive. Then I need you to stop complaining, stop whining, cut down that activity, and make sure that you're doing something that contributes to your energy, to your productivity, to your life. So write down what habits do you have to support your sleep. We all know if, right before sleeping time, if you're going to watch TV, and something bad happened, you're not gonna go to sleep very well, right? Or um, some too much action, you're not gonna go to sleep very well. Some people say, you know, they listen to, to soothing music, help them go to sleep. Uh, you close all the lights, you close all the curtains. My coach, Brendan Bouchard, he, he, he said he bring black tape, and he actually, when, when he travels, he, he tape over the, the alarm clock. So I, everything in the room is pitch black, and that helps him sleep. Dr. Farhan said that the temperature has to be 65 or something for you to go to sleep. Well, personally, that doesn't work for me because that would be too cold. But whatever it is that you know help you go to sleep, those are the things that you should do. So when you say, okay, I, I have eight hours to sleep, so I'm gonna go to bed at 10 and get up at six. At 10 o'clock when you hit the bed, you go to sleep and you don't keep yourself awake, okay? That's being very intentional. And if you can't fall asleep at all, we need to find out why you can't fall asleep. If you've been working for eight hours, and you go home, you take care of your family, and you still can't sleep, well, maybe there's something wrong. Maybe you have sleep apnea, I don't know. But, but you need, you, you, sleep is such a big part of energy because if you have enough sleep, you will have enough energy. And that's what's important. That's what I need you 
to pay attention to, so sleep. Just gonna go to the Facebook page. Okay, so everybody, write down that for me. Then the next thing I want you to think about is what kind of routine do you have to recharge yourself daily? Okay, now I'm going to go back to um, recharging yourself. If you remember, I said, I'm going to, we can go drink water, right? Uh, take some drinks of water. We can uh, do the two-minute meditation. We can basically when you're, you're working, you're sitting in the room, you can stand up, you can walk around, you can change your position to break to break that low energy and recharge yourself. So what do you do on a daily basis? I'm trying to get to there. Okay. So what do you do to recharge your own energy? Now for me, there's a couple of other things that I do, right? So I would excuse myself from the chair. I would actually go outside and I would walk around the building, right? I, so my office, we, we're in this building. So all I need to do is just walk around the building. If you're in a, if you're in a professional building, you know, maybe just walk down a couple, couple of flights of stairs, okay? Go to your room. Uh, maybe you can just listen to some music for about five ten minutes or you do that meditation that we just said the the two minutes um, uh, meditation uh, you can do some exercise you can do some tapping I, I demonstrate this when um, when I speak when I run seminars um, for example when you're tapping you use your hand like this right and you tap your body pretty hard to get the blood flow throughout your body. So for example, if I want to tap my arm here and get my blood flow here, it would be like this. Right? So um, this, this side, this will get my blood flow in my arm. I want to get my blood flow on my legs. It's a little bit hard for you to see. I would just raise one leg up and start at the ankle and go up. Right? So I would do that exercise throughout the whole body and it would take me maybe about two minutes. Okay? It's called um, it's called Qigong exercise, and when I do that, I get the blood flow throughout the whole body, and I shift my energy. And a lot of times when people do that with me, when we do that during a seminar, everybody feel their energy go up. So that's another thing that you can do um, when, you, when you want to recharge your energy, okay? Daily. What do you do from the morning? You have lunch. Of course, lunch is going to bring up your energy, but if you eat something real heavy, then you need to kind of keep yourself stay alert. And we're not talking about drinking Red Bull. We're not talking about drinking coffee, none of that, okay? So write down what you do to recharge your energy. That's for the daily. What do you do weekly? What do you do? You go through a whole week, maybe you work from Monday through Wednesday, uh, Monday through Thursday, or maybe you work the Saturdays. What do you do to recharge your energy on your day off? I personally think, and I haven't done this because I still got one more kid in school, but I personally think if you can if you can work Monday, Tuesday, take Wednesday off, right in the middle of the week, you recharge yourself, you come back, Thursday, Friday, I think you're gonna have a lot of energy. That's just that just what I think. Um, so so think about things like that where you can recharge your energy during the week and at the end of the week, right? How do you recharge the next week? 
you get your energy up. Monthly. What are you going to do to recharge your energy for the month? Uh, maybe you take a trip. You take a weekend trip. You take your family. You drive along the coast. Like in California, in Southern California, we can drive along the Southern California coast. Um, just taking yourself out of your regular environment, putting yourself in a different environment where you can experience new things. You open, you you open up to experience, you know, to a, a a different setting. You're more relaxed. You let your curiosity runs. Those are all the things that would pick your energy, recharge your energy. And then, what do you do for the year? Do you do you plan a, a week a week long vacation? You want you plan a two weeks vacation? Um, Sometimes I hear doctors and 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 business owners talk about retreat. Okay, retreats are great, but sometimes it's something that you have to look forward to. Oh, we're gonna have a retreat first quarter. We're gonna have a retreat second quarter. But what am I gonna do tomorrow? What am I gonna do today? What am I gonna do next week? Right. So it's not about the one time where you can kick up. Your energy, you get to your peak performance. High performance is about every day, heightened level and sustained level. So that's why it's very important. I ask you to write down what are you doing right now daily to recharge your energy, and then what are you doing weekly to recharge your energy, and what are you doing monthly to recharge your energy, and obviously what are you going to do yearly to recharge your energy. So I want you to write all those things down. And think of: Is there any area in your life that you feel very stressful about? That it is draining your energy. So when my kids were younger, <laughs> a lot of time it's going to be the kids, right? Uh, well, whatever week, let's say we we used to have a week where everybody have minimum days, but uh, the elementary school have a different schedule. And then the middle school has a different schedule, and then the high school has a different schedule. The high school kid, we live a block and a half away from high school, so we're good. But the other two, the minimum days, this one getting up, getting off at a certain time, and then the other one got up at a different time. I basically just say, you know what? I'm not coming in in the morning to work. I'm just going to come in in the afternoon because it was too much stress trying to keep track of all of these people. What time they're getting out of school? Um, when you when you have multiple things going on like that and it drains you and it stress you out, what are the ways that you have to cope with that? Now, sometimes it would be I'm going to say no to this, right? I don't want to do this anymore because this is stressing me out. This is draining my energy. You need to look at what kind of result you you're shooting for, and do you have to do all these things to get to those results? Can you get somebody else to help you do certain things to get to those results? For me. Picking up my kids is my thing. That's just my thing. So I would, I don't mind running around picking up my kids after school. So I never hire anybody um, to do that for me, even though that was actually recommended by a consulting company. That was kind of funny. Uh, so of course I didn't hire them because when they say, "Hey, doctor, you should hire somebody to go pick up your kids," they don't understand the values that what's important to me, my family, and so I'm not going to work with them, right? So um, that's why we talk about clarity first. What's important to you? And you work toward getting what's most important to you. So think about what's stressing you out, and what could you do to manage that stress, and to improve your energy when you're dealing with in those situations. And and sometimes it doesn't have to be just you. You could enlist somebody to help you. Other people can help you, uh, whether it's your spouse or your babysitter or a caretaker, or whatever. Um, you should not be the one that's taking all the stress. All the training, um, because that's one that's one way to control your energy is you're not going to expend your energy on everything, especially if everything are not equal. They're not all important to you. You have your own priority. You make sure people understand where your priorities are, what's most important to you, and that's what they should be supporting you. Okay. So write that down. What's stressing you out? What's draining your um, What's draining your energy? And and 
and what are you doing about it? And you can, you can by the way, you can post comments um, down there. I will answer the comments uh, one, once we do with the, with the, with the live. So, um, you know, post your comments, post your questions, and I'll take care of that. Now, I want you to think, if you are committed to increase your energy, to get to your optimal health, and you know what your optimal health is, right? What would you immediately stop doing? So maybe you wrote down, well, I'm not sleeping enough, right? Then I think your list of immediately stop doing would be stop staying up late for no reason. And then you have, what would you immediately start doing? So stop staying up late, stop watching TV, stop being on Facebook late, and start going to bed at 9 p.m., 10 p.m., whatever the time is, to give you your seven or eight hours of sleep. Okay, so what would you stop doing immediately? And what would you start doing immediately? Those are the two things, those are the two columns that I want you to write down. If, if earlier, if you said, I need to do, I need to get more sleep. If you say, I need to get more energy while I'm working on patients during the day, I need to exercise more, I need to eat more healthy, all of that, then what do you have to start doing right away to achieve that? And then what, what is it that you may need to stop doing right away to achieve that, okay? Now, I'm gonna transition, I'm gonna close out the screen here. And I'm gonna transition to a worksheet. And this worksheet is, a, um, is an energy worksheet. Let me see if I can pull up this worksheet here. Okay. Well, it's not here. Anyway, I can go over it um, right here. And the and this particular worksheet is about increasing your energy. So, um, what would you do to increase your energy? We have mentioned to go to sleep more. Okay, we have mentioned to exercise. We have mentioned to make to to make sure that you keep, you you eat well, you eat properly in moderation. Some of the other suggestions um, on this worksheet, and I'll be happy to send the worksheet to, um, to anyone who, you can just post a comment, I can send the worksheet to you, um, to smile more, right? Uh, we are dentists, business owners, people come in to see us, the very first thing they need to see is your smile. Because your smile brings so much energy, and your smile is contagious. So don't have a grumpy face, don't have a serious face, have a smiling face. And make sure that your staff have a smiling face. One other thing I do is I promise to myself, when I go into a room, I'm gonna make my patient laugh, okay? So if I have 20 patients booked for the day, I don't know, maybe I make 10 people laugh. That's better than that. So, Give yourself a, a goal, you know, I'm, I want to make people laugh and, and make sure that you intentionally, when you go into the room, I mean, sometimes you walk into the room and you see this really cranky person and then you go, well, you know, I don't think I really want to use my energy to get this person to laugh. Or you can say, man, this is a challenge. I'm going to see if I can get this person to laugh. And you'll be surprised when you're challenging yourself, you take on that challenge, you actually will get that person to laugh for you, right? And when that person laughs, the energy in the room changed. So um, yesterday I was actually joking with a patient. She said that she had, um, she put down chest pain and I, and I asked, and then she's like 20 something. And I said, what's, what's with this chest pain? And she said, oh, you know, they told me it was muscle spasm. I thought I was having a heart attack. And I said, you know what? That is so funny because about um, nine, 10 years ago, the same thing happened to me. I was 40 or something like that. And I was young, 
and I had the chest pain and I thought I was having a heart attack. I went to the fridge, five o'clock in the morning, I'm standing there, I'm looking at the magnet, the signs of a heart attack, right? And then it says chest pain. And I go, yeah, chest pain, numbness, no. Um, you know, difficulty breathing, no. So the only thing I had was chest pain. And and I, I still wake up, take my kids to school, then I call my friend, she's an internist, and I said, hey, I'm having the chest pain here, what do you think I should do? So she said, go to the emergency room. So I went to the emergency room, they hooked me up, and they found nothing. And they said, it's muscle spasm of your, you know, the muscle wall around your heart. So go home and take some Motrin. And I asked them, so why am I getting, get, you know, they, well, they said, well, they don't know. So I told my friend that, and she said, oh, you probably are stressed. And I said, but I don't feel stressed at all. And she said, yes, because sometimes as professionals, what happens is we're dealing with stress so much, we build the tolerance. So let's say if this is, this is your tolerance for stress, you slowly, you just build it up. And so at some point, you can tolerate a lot of stress, but you don't feel stress. But then your body is filled, right? So that's why it's so important to watch your stress level, to not do certain things that stress you out because we, we all have very high tolerance of stress and sometimes we don't really sometimes we don't realize that and we take in so much stress and our body will start giving. Okay, so we don't want to do that. Um, you want to eat more healthy. You want, obviously you want to eat color stuff, right? Colorful vegetable green vegetable things cut down on your cut down on sugar um, have a splurge once in a while but don't be depend you know don't be a sugar addict you you all know those right those are all healthy habits that will help you improve your energy um, get into that exercise routine like I said some of the clients that I coach they go oh yeah I want to go to 24 hours fitness yeah right right and I asked them about it. Uh, no, it's kind of been busy. You know, it's too dark. It's, you know, it's the winter. It gets dark too fast. And then when it's the summer, it gets too hot. And they have all of these excuses. And, and, and <laughs> referencing back to being pregnant. And when I was having my baby and I'm really good at, you know, handling everything. I think a lot of the mothers can relate to this when you're pregnant every day. You're walking 30 minutes or 45 minutes, whatever the doctor told you, right? And, and you're taking that vitamins religiously. And for me, to drink that milk and that's, I'm not a milk person. I think a lot of Asians don't drink whole milk. And that was the worst part, right? It was the worst part of the pregnancy was to drink the milk. Every morning, I was fine. I drink the milk and then I want to throw up and I was trying to bargain with my good friend. I go, hey, Jane, uh, do I really have to drink eight ounces? And then she, she got, it's funny, she got a, another cup in my cupboard, and the other cup was just fatter, right? And she take this eight ounce thing, she pour it over and it filled this one, and she said, Emily, drink this cup. And I go, it's the same damn amount. She said, yes, but it looks shorter. So it's gonna help you drink the thing, right? So, and, and why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this is because when you are focused and you say, I need to do this, and you make it a routine, you're gonna do it. When I was, I had three kids, so for nine months for each kid, I was drinking milk three times a day. Yeah, I did not wanna drink at lunchtime because that would be too much stress for me when I was working, but three times a day. Breakfast, dinner, and before I go to bed, I would drink milk three times a day. As soon as the baby comes, forget it, I'm not drinking milk anymore, right? Because I was doing that because of that, very focused. I was walking every evening, evening after dinner, I was walking 30 to 45 minutes. Because that was what the, the doctor said you should be doing when you're pregnant. So what, do I, what I mean by that is all of these things, I think the things that you say you know that you should do, I need you to commit to it. I need you to understand why you're doing it. You're doing it for yourself, it's not for your kids not for your family, you need to take care of yourself first and make it that make that part of your routine. And once you do that, you will be able to make that shift to establish a routine, to maintain your energy, to heighten your energy 
to increase your energy. So I want you to pick a couple of things that you're gonna do to increase energy. For example, you're gonna go to bed at 10 and get up at six. These are examples, right? You're gonna, you're gonna do meditation. People say they do meditation in the morning and evening. I was talking about getting your energy up during the day. Maybe you're gonna do that two minute uh, uh, release meditation in the middle of the day. Maybe it's after lunch, you're gonna do the meditation. You're gonna drink a lot of water, right? Water rehydrate you. If you've been sitting in an operatory doing something for about 45 minutes, if you get up and you go to the lunch room, you remove yourself from this physical environment, you go over there, you get water to drink, hydrate your body, you go back up, you're a little bit fresher than when you were sitting there. I'm sure when we, we all work and you're staring at something for a long time, and then you just take your loops off and you just walk down the hall and you come back in a couple of minutes and you look at it and you go, crap, that's not good enough. And then you continue your work. Same thing, you, you, you break that tension and you remove yourself from that environment and you come back and you're more refreshed. So I want you to do that. You, you know that it's good for you when you're focusing, you're concentrating on working on a patient on, on, on you know, like, like this, laser focus on a project but you know, if you just take a break and walk away, you come back and you, you're better, you feel better. And that's what you should do. Because that's how you're gonna keep up your energy. You can serve your patients, your customers, your clients a whole lot better. So those are some of the ways to maintain your energy, to increase your energy. If you ever um, hang around with me, I think a lot of time people will tell you that I have a lot of energy, uh, which is pretty pretty cool. I don't think I have high energy, but I have good energy and I maintain it. I would fly to Australia, which is 17 hours, right? And um, I don't lose sleep. I sleep, I go through the day, I eat normally, right? Um, I'm out every day, sightseeing and, and going to seminars and everything. I flew to India, the same thing. I flew to London, the same thing. I hang out with other friends and, they, and they're like, hey, where'd you, where'd you get all this energy, right? And they hang out with me and they don't see me do anything. I don't, I don't, I usually, especially if I'm, you know, in a different time zone, I would drink some coffee, partly because, yeah, it's gonna help me stay awake with 15 or 17 hours difference. But, but other than that, during the day, that's it. I don't really snack, um, I just drink water. Uh, and then I just keep myself busy. Just keep busy, keep busy. And I still have good energy. And I think that's from habits. That's from taking care of myself. And people would say all the time, you have a lot of energy. Now, about two months ago or so, I started drinking a supplement um, from ASEA, which is, one of them is a liquid, and one of them is a gel. Now the gel, I use it on, on my face and everything, because it, it, it helps you rejuvenate your face. But the, the liquid, I, we just drink four ounces in the morning, four ounces in the evening. It, it, it works with redox technology. It helps your cells talk to each other and heal inflammation. Inflammation, you know, your stress is going to cause inflammation. And so I've been using that. I don't think that's what kicked my energy up, but it certainly is part of the regimen uh, because I was already having good energy before I drink the, re, the, the ACA. Take those supplements, especially when you're older. I'm gonna be 51 in a couple of weeks when I have my event on August 9th. That's actually my birthday, I'm gonna turn 51. And, and I wanna have that energy, right? So if I need to take a supplement, if I should take a supplement, I'm gonna do that. If I need to go to sleep a little earlier, I'm gonna do that. Um, if I need to eat certain food, I'm gonna do that. I'm, I'm taking care of myself. So you know yourself the best, you know what you want, you know what's important to you. Take care of yourself, right? Take care of yourself, not for other people. You don't need to look good to other people, just for yourself so you know that you're healthy. And you have any question, you know, make a comment or you can personal message me. I would rather you make comment and so I would know. Let me just reference this real quick. So I would know and I would love to have a chat and we can talk about how we're gonna keep up with our energy. And so I want you to look at the paper, right? I want you to look at your notes. Take a look at that and just circle what you're going to commit to doing. 
and I hope you circle everything. But be truthful to yourself when you wrote down five things and you think you're going to commit to doing two things, well, just circle the two things for me. Okay? I think, I think that would be great if you do that. So just circle, uh, circle the two things. And um, ask yourself, what did you like about the session today? Maybe there's something that you enjoy. Uh, maybe I touch on something that you've, trying, you've been trying to avoid. That's the one that you need to focus. If I touch on something that you've been avoiding and you haven't been doing, I want you to focus on that one. And if you, if you, can, if you found any insights, you know, insights about yourself, hey, you know what, I've been talking about losing five pounds or whatever, and whatever, you know, going to exercise, and I haven't been doing that, I want you to put an asterisk around that, okay? That's an insight. That's an insight about myself. Yep, I'm talking about that. I haven't been doing that. You need to get that commitment on. Okay? So, um, I hope that you, you, that, that you get some insights. I hope you uh, feel good about some of the things that you write down. I, I know that the, whatever you write down is commitment. You can do it. It's a matter of doing it. That's all it is. Just a matter of doing it. And stop giving yourself excuses. Stop breaking appointments to yourself. Stop no showing to yourself. Actually commit to yourself and do things that you know is important to you. And um, that would wrap up our session here in energy. The next session we're going to talk about uh, is going to be about courage. Okay, so um, until next week, next week, same time, 5 p.m. on Wednesday. I will, um, I will meet again. You can, courage is when we talk about gaining confidence, uh, taking command of your life, especially in expressing yourself and dealing with um, any kind of challenges that you may face, how you're gonna deal with it, head on, face on, um, all, all that wonderful stuff. Uh, so make sure, when, make sure to, to, um, to put notification when I go live that you know that I'm going live. And um, I will, See you next week. Let me just check and see if we have any questions. Okay, so I don't see any questions or any comments. So you can you can still post it later. You don't have to post it right now. Um, I hope everybody have a great evening. And I will see you next week. We talk about courage. <laughs>